Quantum computing is referred to by many as the next big leap in our technological advancement. They promise to give us the ability to solve problems that are literally impossible to solve on even our most advanced supercomputers. Consider this. It said that if you used every piece of silicon on the planet to build a computer, then supplied it with unlimited power, it would still not come close to what a quantum computer could theoretically do. But it gets much crazier. Quantum computers use quantum phenomena like entanglement and superposition to perform computations. Their processors are measured in qubits or quantum bits. Each additional qubit increases the computing power of the computer exponentially. There are several big tech companies working day and night to bring the promise of quantum computing to fruition. But while the likes of Google and IBM fight over who will gain the quantum advantage first, a feat Google claimed last year and that IBM immediately contested, a small Canadian company, D-Wave Systems, has been making some big splashes for decades. Founded in 1999, D-Wave Systems has already brought to market what they describe as a quantum annealing computer. In fact, they have released four generations of the monolithic machines to date and are not slowing down. Like our earliest conventional computers, D-Wave's computers are huge, but they require close to absolute zero temperatures to operate. They look a little like the monolith from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. I've been following them for some time. On May 11, 2011, D-Wave Systems announced the D-Wave 1. Described as the world's first commercially available quantum computer, it had a 128 qubit processor at a time when most people believed quantum computers were still only theoretical. Now about those processors. If you were impressed with the accuracy of Moore's Law, the trend that the number of transistors on processors would double in number and the processor would half in price every two years, then this will blow your mind. D-Wave's processors are advancing almost exponentially. In 2002, D-Wave's then-CTO, Jordy Rose, who we will talk about more later, unveiled a single qubit processor. A year later, a two-qubit processor was unveiled. They are now producing 2,000 qubit machines and they're not stopping. The next jump looks to be 4,000 qubits. With that kind of computing power, I imagine there will come a point where any further development would become redundant. They claim their computers will outperform a universe-sized computer. Stay with me. To say that another way, if you took all the matter in our universe and built a computer with it, and then allowed that computer to calculate for the 14 billion or so years the universe has been in existence, it still wouldn't be able to keep up with their computers. But how? If you use everything in the universe, how can you get more out of it? That's got to be contrary to the laws of physics. There is one explanation, though. Steve Jerviston, a board member with D-Wave Systems, in 2015, stated that D-Wave's computers, and I'm quoting him directly, engages the computational resources of parallel universes. So, while the rest of the world debates whether parallel universes exist, D-Wave is claiming to be utilizing resources from them, and there's no reason to doubt them. They are a successful company, and since their computers go for 15 million a pop, customers need to see value. I don't think this is another Theranos. Listen to what Jordy Rose, the founder and now special consultant to D-Wave Systems, had to say over five years ago. He said, I'll tell you a little bit about quantum computers and why people care so much about them. There are literally tens of thousands of some of the brightest people in the world today trying to build these machines and understand them. I'm going to tell you why. There is a very clear prediction that our most successful theory of nature makes. There are a mind-bogglingly large number of parallel realities as real as this one that have different consistent histories. Science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds, and quantum computers are perhaps the most exciting of all of these. We still can't definitively prove parallel universes exist, much like the Higgs boson at one time, yet we are already exploiting the resources? This feat has caused a tremendous amount of uproar and speculation, 
If you are from this universe, then you probably have heard about the Mandela Effect. Many believers of the Mandela Effect point directly at D-Wave systems and place the accountability for the confusion at the base of their monolithic machines. So who exactly are using these machines? Outfits like Google and Lockheed Martin and the CIA. I wonder what the CIA would be doing with a quantum computer. D-Wave states they have over 200 applications written for these computers in the following areas. Optimization, machine learning, pattern recognition and anomaly detection, cybersecurity, image analysis, financial analysis, software hardware verification and validation, bioinformatics, cancer research, traffic flow, manufacturing processes, and internet advertising placement. I think the only thing on that list the CIA wouldn't be interested in is maybe traffic flow. We live in a world where the CIA has access to computing power from parallel universes. That's a factual statement as far as I can tell. I wonder what else they have access to. Jordy Rose today is working on building synthetic humans. He founded an artificial intelligence startup. I went to the website and I was confronted with this. He says his goal is to give AI goals that align with a beneficial future for humans. He set the goal to bring a quantum computer to market and achieve that. If past performance indicates future performance, we can only hope what Rose creates is a success for all of us. Thank you for listening. If you like my work, please consider subscribing to my channel. And remember, love is the answer, whatever that means.